Blue Rain Gallery has regularly exhibited at SOFA, officially known as Sculpture, Objects, Functional Art and Design Shows since 2007. Given this exciting opportunity to participate in a virtual SOFA experience hosted by the AACG for 2022, we have chosen to highlight works by Preston Singletary, Vivian Wang, Nathan Bennett, Aaron Courier, Sharon Meyer, and Alex Bernstein. Preston Singletary has been an unwavering feature of our SOFA presentations throughout our 15 years of participation. Singletary is best known for creating glass sculpture that is reflective of his native Clinket heritage. Our display of Preston Singletary's work shows a cross section of his designs. Starting at left and moving to the right, we are presented with two ravens. A deep red cast lead crystal sculpture that connects Norse mythology with Clinket form. Ultimately, this totem tells the story of Singletary's family, his marriage to a woman from Sweden, their two children, and the family dog. Below the totem, we have displayed Singletary's straw yellow Clinket basket, paired with a black and blue bottle form. The next set of sculptures we are presented with are Floating to the Sea and Blackfish Robe. Floating to the Sea is a near monochromatic piece that depicts a revered shaman figure taking his final journey in his canoe. The feathers he holds in his hands are for protection on his journey. Blackfish robe stands tall in a striking combination of red, black, and clear glass. The sculpture tells the story of a clinket man named Ganakadet, who secretly wore a killer whale body to obtain fish and seafood for his starving family and clan members. Ganakadet's wife took credit for the success of Ganakadet's bounty and wished for larger quantities and larger catch. His wife's wishes proved to be too much for Ganakadet, and he died from exhaustion. His body was found washed upon the shore inside the carcass of a killer whale. Stories as this are at the core of Singletary's inspiration. The next grouping of sculptures by Singletary depicts a variety of forms and a mixed palette. Thematically keeping with the overarching narrative of his Clinket heritage, we are presented again with a variation of the berry basket, a modernist interpretation of the salmon inspired by Brancusi, a shaman figure floating on a brilliant blue globe rattle, and a bear claw that depicts the sand carved image of a raven. Vivian Wang, a gifted storyteller as well, presents us with exquisitely detailed figurative works in ceramic and glass that conjure the history and mystique of ancient China, Korea, and Japan. Known for her representations of court life figures, both accurate and symbolic, Wang ensures great detail in the robes and hairstyles of each figure. Each sculpture is painted softly with casein to give the impression of hand-dyed silk and bejeweled with a variety of precious and semi-precious stones. The cast glass heads, hands, and feet of Wang's sculptures contrast beautifully with the dressed ceramic bodies of her subjects. On display, we are presented with four sculptures by Vivian Wang, a few of which I will elaborate on. Shogun portrays the famous Japanese military leader, Tokugawa Ieyasu, who lived from 1542 to 1616. Tokugawa Ieyasu was raised in the court of the neighboring Imagawa clan, where he was given the education of a nobleman. After his father's death when he was 25 years old, Tokugawa defeated the army of the last of his rivals at the decisive battle of Sekigahara. In 1603, he took the title of Shogun or military governor, becoming the supreme leader. Wang chose to depict Layasu as a young boy, exuding all the confidence of a soon-to-be leader. Dragon in Braids portrays a young lady of the Joseon dynasty of Korea during the 16th century. At that time, women of the upper class wore formal attire consisting of a chima or skirt and a jiagori or jacket as a staple of their wardrobe. Extravagant and large hairstyles were another important fashion statement of the period. Women wore wigs with yard-long fake braids wrapped around elaborate hair shapes, usually fake buns, as demonstrated on the young lady in Yang's sculpture. Though appearance and fashion were stressed for women during the Joseon dynasty, the greatest duty for women of this period was to provide a son for the family. 
symbolized by the dragon depicted on the jacket of the young woman. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge Vivian Wang's newest piece titled Phoenix and Dragon. It is rare that Wang creates multifigural pieces such as this. Phoenix and Dragon is an ancient Chinese term for fraternal twins in which one is a girl, the phoenix, and one is a boy, the dragon. To have this combination is a sign of good fortune. The mother and her twins are members of the Su dynasty in 6th century China. The fashion of the time included elaborate and bold hairstyles, as well as extravagant details on the clothing, replete with an abundance of gold fabric and gemstones. Erin Courier is a mixed media portrait artist working with acrylic and collage. She is compelled by the belief that our commonalities as human beings far outweigh our differences. Divisions are often either superficial or artificially created based on racial, economic, and national ideologies. Courier's mixed media paintings illuminate injustices, give voice to the disenfranchised, celebrate passionate and profound individuals that serve as inspiration to others, educate her viewers by building awareness, and everything in between. On display for SOFA, we are featuring three pieces by Erin Courier. The largest of the grouping, titled Las Hermanas Shevchenko, depicts two professional female mixed martial art and Muay Thai fighters. Antonina and her younger sister, Valentina, both women compete in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. At the time this painting was created, Valentina was the current flyweight champion of the world. The sisters were born in Kyrgyzstan, then part of the former Soviet Union, to a mother who was president of the Muay Thai Association and a two-time Muay Thai champion. From a young age, the girls practiced and competed in Muay Thai, Taekwondo, and kickboxing. At the age of 12, Valentina had knocked out and defeated her 22-year-old opponent, earning her the nickname Bullet. Antonina fought professionally as well, winning 39 out of 40 kickboxing and Muay Thai bouts between 2003 and 2017. Today, the two sisters live, teach, and hold citizenship in Peru, where they started an award-winning initiative that provides Muay Thai training to marginalized youth as an alternative to joining gangs. The two smaller paintings to the left are excellent examples of Courier's single-figure portraits. At the top, Courier depicts a world event from 2009 in which a young female journalist, Razana El Yami, was sentenced to 60 lashes by a Saudi Arabian court for her involvement with a controversial television show in which a Saudi man openly talked about his explicit sex life. This episode sparked serious controversy throughout the devoutly Muslim country. Saudi Arabia practices a strict form of Islam known as Wahhabism. Anything provocative or sex-related is strictly banned on Saudi television and media outlets. Rosanna El Yami was only 22 years old at the time of sentencing. She denied involvement in the particular episode in question, but was too frustrated to fight the sentencing. Fortunately, El Yami was pardoned by the Saudi king just days before her scheduled flogging. Courier has depicted Rosanna El Yami as the Hindu or Buddhist Tara in her painting, giving her goddess status. She is undoubtedly embracing feminine beauty as evidenced with her red high heels, candy red lipstick, and perfectly painted eyes while still wrapped in a conservative attire. The last of Erin Courier's paintings from the display is a celebratory piece in which the artist pays tribute to flamenco dancing as an art form. Courier was chosen two years in a row by the National Institute of Flamenco in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to create the poster image for their annual Flamenco Festival. Courier expresses that the beating fiery heart of flamenco is that which she seeks to embody in all of her portraiture. Most significantly, the strength, fearlessness, and resilience of the human spirit. Courier references these elements using recycled materials in her collage. Alex Bernstein, a glass artist of the highest caliber, brings a clean, process-driven element to our display. Brilliantly colored cast glass sculptures with clarity of form speak to both the strength and delicate nature of the medium. A portion of the luminous glass surface in every sculpture is reserved for a reduction of material in which Bernstein uses carving wheels and hand tools to grind out material, creating contrast and texture. Some of his sculptures received the ultimate treatment in which he uses the aptly named Bernsteining technique to fuse steel to the surface of his pieces. 
Before us, we are presented with three examples of Bernstein's work, each unique in form and technique. Neo-Ice is a lunar form that embraces a soft purple and ice-colored palette. This piece is beautifully balanced and speaks to the delicate nature of his work. The three-pillar set to the lower right, titled Light Gold Triptych, is hard to resist in all its brilliance and luminosity. Evoking crystals from the earth, this sculpture has an aura. Light is its companion, and it ultimately invites the viewer to stand before it and absorb its radiance. The third and final example of Bernstein's work on display has an anchoring sculptural presence. Upon first impressions, one finds a well-chosen variety of glass frit or glass blocks suspended in the casting. The torqued fruit slice shape pairs with a seductive high gloss surface of purple and green. The artist employed his signature Bernsteining technique, giving the sculpture a slight industrial feel. Our two-dimensional offerings are completed by the alchemic patina paintings of Nathan Bennett. Bennett is a master of turning simple sheets of bronze into beautifully rendered works of art. Using a variety of acid-based elements, a paintbrush and a blowtorch, Bennett deliberately applies patina to create brilliant scenes of nature, locomotives, wildlife, and the human figure. It took many years to refine his art form, but today we are presented with the success of his determination. From left to right, we see pieces he has titled Earth and Sky, A Little Different, and Changing Room. Each piece features a spotlit tree rendered in dark silhouette with shimmering gold leaves. The setting is magical, ephemeral, rife with mystery and intrigue. Bennett states, trees are a symbol of us. Trees allow him to convey human emotion more clearly than any other symbol. We end our presentation with the extraordinary jewelry of Sharon Meyer. Meyer creates exceptional one-of-a-kind wearable art using precious and semi-precious stones. Her couture line features 18 karat gold and platinum, while her designer line uses sterling silver. We are currently highlighting examples from the couture line, many of which Meyer refers to as vault pieces. Her pieces are at once bold and refined. Color and texture are key elements in her jewelry making, as are the unique clasps and closures she makes for many of her necklaces and bracelets. Taking a closer look at just a few examples from the display, one might notice how luxurious and varied these pieces are. For example, the carved Burmese jade, lemon quartz, and diamond couture necklace is fit for the neck of a queen. The combination of stones, contrasting textures, and perfectly wearable design make this necklace a standout. The gold, diamond, and frosted black onyx circles couture necklace is impeccable. Frosted black onyx set in 18 karat gold circles are accentuated by a few thoughtfully placed diamonds. Tiny peaks placed off center add an unexpected contour to the otherwise simple geometric circles that form this necklace. This necklace has a retro vibe with a modern flair. Lastly, Meyer's gold diamonds and pearls lariat couture necklace evokes nostalgic elegance. Drapey feminine tassels of ivory pearls pair with larger round white cuts. Pave diamonds and 18 karat gold flowers join the two styles of pearl. This necklace was designed to be a lariat style, but it has enough length and versatility that it could easily be worn in other flattering ways. This concludes our virtual SOFA presentation. We wish to thank the AACG and SOFA for creating this opportunity.